everybody, it's Pastor Craig coming to you again with this week's Sunday School Overview. We'll be in lesson number 11, the signs of the true God, Moses and the plagues. And this comes from Exodus chapter 7. So let us begin in God's word. And this is uh, from Exodus chapter 7. So it says, And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my host, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Prove yourself by working a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a, ser a, ser a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret arts. For each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he, worked not, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as, is his, as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him, and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve in me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall turn into blood. The fish of the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink. And the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking water from the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and all their pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, he lifted up the staff and struck the water in the Nile. And all the water in the Nile turned into blood, and the fish in the Nile died, and the Nile stank, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt, but the magicians of Egypt did the same by the, their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug, dug along the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the Nile. Seven full days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so you can see here as the beginning of the uh, plagues, as uh, God uh, commands Moses to go back to his people, to Pharaoh, and, and demand that they be released from bondage and captivity. Um, and we start to see the beginning of these signs that, that come uh, to uh, to Pharaoh through through Moses and Aaron. And when we look to the law gospel aspect of this, we see that our own, in, in, on our own, uh, we see no need for God in our life or in the world. Uh, just as, as Pharaoh really wasn't impressed with what God could do um, because the world, his own uh, magicians, could perform similar tasks. And so therefore, he thought he needed no need. Um, he there, there was no need for for the God of of Moses, um, and that that is how we act towards God with all the blessings and gifts that we have been given. But the gospel is that Christ suffered and died on the cross to free me from the bondage of sin, and that is the Bible truth that our God is the one true God that we shall have no other gods, um, and, and to to put Him before everything. And a good Bible verse to remember this is um, from Jeremiah 10.10, 10, but the Lord is the true God. It reminds us who God is, who we are in relationship to God. Now, if you look to the catechism connection, you can see it here. It's the first commandment. Now, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? 
we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Um, we see that Pharaoh had no fear, love, or trust in God. He trusted in his own self, his own his own wise men and, and magicians. Um, and it would not be until that tenth and final plague of the death of the firstborns uh, that, that Pharaoh would, would finally succumb to the truth uh, of who God is. But even after that, his heart was hardened, and he went after uh, Moses and God's people ultimately dying in, in the in the Red Sea. And so when we look at this lesson, we can see, you know, that God guides Moses to release his people from slavery in Egypt, but Pharaoh's proves less than cooperative. And then we see, you know, a series of plagues foretold by Moses and sent by God brings destruction and pain through the, upon the Egyptians, but only serves to harden Pharaoh's heart against Moses and the Israelites. Um, and And so... Uh, as we look to who we are and our identity, our calling in this, uh, you know, God has forgiven our hard-hearted selfishness and given us a new heart through Christ's sacrifice. And so we are rescued and redeemed to share God's word with others. Um, now, for the younger kids, uh, when they leave this uh, Sunday school, I would like them to know, uh, you know, that one, that, that they're, our God is the one true God, and, and know that God has power to help them and understand that God is the one true God. Uh, older kids, they need to know that as well, but, but also that they can describe what it means that God is the one true God and can recognize how the events of the plagues of Egypt demonstrated God's ultimate authority as the one true God. And so um, hopefully this little short little rundown will help you as you prepare, meditate, uh, pray upon this lesson. Um, as you prepare for our upcoming Sunday school. Um, so thank you for all that you do uh, for the kids here at, at Bethlehem. I know they appreciate it, even if they don't always say it, and I know they do, um, and, and I appreciate it. So thank you, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you all again on Sunday. Have a blessed day.